Welcome to Math with Professor V. In this video, we're going to learn how to find the areas of polar curves. Traditionally, you study this topic in Calculus 2. So we'll look how to find the area within a polar curve, between polar curves, and more. So first thing you need to recall is what the formula is for the area of a sector of a circle. And the formula is A equals 1 half R squared theta. That's for sector of a circle, the area of it. So what does that mean? Well, basically you have a circle. The radius is going to be given by R. And then theta is the angle that's being swept out by the sector. So if you want the area of this slice or sector, you take 1 half times the radius squared. So this is the radius R times theta. So in calculus, I'm not going to show you basically all the nitty gritty of it, but the formula that we use when we have a polar curve and we want to find the area of a specific region that's defined using polar coordinates, we take the integral now from a to b or alpha to beta of one half r squared d theta. And the idea is what we did with the polar region is we chopped it up into a bunch of tiny sectors, tiny little wedges like this, and then we took infinitely many of them, and in the limit we have this beautiful definite integral. Okay, so basically this is just the formula that you need to remember here, 1 half r squared d theta, and then the other thing I would say is the 1 half here in the formula is written inside the integral sign. I would tell you let's always write it on the outside when we're actually sitting there and computing it. Okay, so let's practice a little bit. We'll start gently with a nice little warm up problem. Find the area of the shaded region. And here they gave me the equation of the polar curve, r squared equals sine two theta. And the graph is already there, so we don't have to put that together ourselves. And notice the shaded region is only here in quadrant one. So we have to determine what the limits of integration are going to be, a and b. So a equals one half integral from a to b of r squared d theta. a and b should be the limits that bound the shaded region. And hopefully you can see the shaded region begins when a or theta is zero up until theta is pi over two. Let me write that in for you, from zero to pi over two. Okay. So we're integrating with respect to theta. These limits represent angles, theta, that bound the region whose area we're trying to find. Good? Okay, so hopefully that part's straightforward. Now we can just set things up. So we're going to have one half integral from zero to pi over two. And interestingly, this polar curve's equation is r squared equals sine 2 theta. So I can just simply replace r squared here with sine 2 theta, and then we have d theta. All right, at this point in your calculus career, you should be good. You don't need to use sub, hopefully. Antiderivative of sine 2 theta. Because of this 2, I'm going to need to divide, right, when I take the antiderivative by 2. And then antiderivative of sine 2 theta would be negative cosine 2 theta with a 1 half in the front. So this 1 half stays. I get another 1 half. And then we have cosine 2 theta evaluated from 0 to pi over 2. Okay, so this is negative 1 fourth sitting outside my integral. Then cosine of 2 times pi over 2, that's cosine of pi. Minus cosine of 2 times 0 is 0. And then hopefully you remember your unit circle values. Cosine of pi is negative 1 minus cosine of 0 is 1. So that's negative 2 times negative 1 fourth, which is going to give me, very good, positive 1 half. All right, so hopefully this wasn't too overwhelming. They're going to get more difficult, but I just wanted to start with a nice little warm up. The graph was given. We're going to have to do that part on our own in a minute but hopefully the idea is clear. So you have to identify the limits of integration and the graph is essential in doing that. If we didn't have the graph, we, you know, we would be having a rough old time. Okay, so here we go. 
This time we have to sketch the curve on our own and then find the area that it encloses. Now, if you need a review of graphing polar curves, I have several videos, I'll link them in the description. You can go to the pre-calculus video lectures playlist or even the calc two or even in some trig videos, I've gone over it already. If you want, I'll quickly just show you, we can make a little table. Also, it's very helpful to remember when you have r equals 2a sine theta, that's a circle centered on the y-axis and the radius is equal to a. And then when you have r equals 2a cosine theta, that's a circle centered on, can you take a guess? Yeah, the x-axis. And again, the radius is A. So this is useful because I just memorized it over time. And these kinds of circles come up a lot, especially in Calc 3. And when you can just look at the equation and recognize, ah, so this is a circle centered on the y-axis. And the radius is 1 then you can graph it super easily. If, if that is just too much, you don't wanna memorize, then all you do is you, you can make a little table. And then I would just plug in the easiest, like the quadrantial angles. So just zero pi over two pi, three pi over two, and then figure out what R is for each of them. So if theta is zero, sine of zero, zero, Theta is pi over two, sine of pi over two is one. So two times one, that's two. That's zero, that's negative two. And honestly, sometimes you need more than just this to get a good graph going. So I recommend memorizing the different kinds of polar curves so that you can recognize what the graph should look like based on the equation. Okay, anyways. Since I know the circle is centered on the y-axis, I don't need to draw too much below the x-axis because it's sitting up top. So here's x, here's y. The radius is only one. So it's this number here is the diameter, two. And let's draw it. I need it just a wee bit bigger. Okay, perfect. And then if you use the table as well, zero, zero, that's here. Pi over two, two, that would be here. Pi zero, you don't really see it. And then three pi over two, negative two. Here's three pi over two, but since the radius is negative two, that just gives me this same point here. So using the table, I would have only gotten these two points, which isn't you know really enough to know what's going on. So you could have added values here or just memorize it like I'm telling you to. Okay, so we want the area enclosed by this entire circle. So you do have to look very carefully when you're determining what the limits of integration should be. Notice here, the area of the circle starts when theta is equal to zero, and then it keeps going, keeps going, keeps going up until when theta is equal to pi. So it goes from zero all the way to pi. But the circle doesn't exist in quadrants three and four. So the limits of integration need to go from zero to pi, no more, no less. If you go zero to two pi, that's wrong, okay? And that's the tricky part because not all circles are centered at the origin. Some are on the y-axis, some are on the x-axis. So you have to graph and understand what the limits of integration should be based on that graph, okay? So here we go, the area is gonna be one half, let's put that outside, we're going zero to pi, and then we need r squared, so that's two sine theta squared d theta. How are we doing? Okay, good. Now let's start working on this integral. So we've got one half integral, zero to pi, four sine squared theta d theta. Let me take the four outside with the one half, then it becomes two, integral zero to pi. Anytime you see sine squared and you need to evaluate its antiderivative, you replace with your half angle identity. So it's one half, one minus cosine two theta, d theta. That should just be like autopilot for you. You don't sit around and wonder, oh, sine squared, what should I do? No, 
Just launch into that identity. Boom. And then, ooh, this is beautiful. Look, two and one half cancels. You guys, I think we're ready. Let's just go ahead and take the antiderivative, okay? Antiderivative of one is theta. Antiderivative of negative cosine two theta, be careful. It's going to be negative one half, uh huh, sine two theta. Beautiful. From zero to pi. How's your work looking? Good, good, good. All right, now let's plug in our limits of integration. So upper limit, we've got pi minus one half times sine of two pi minus lower limit zero minus one half sine of zero. So let's see, what is this gonna be? Pi minus sine of two pi zero minus zero plus zero, so just pi. Oh nice, that worked out lovely. Good? Okay, let us try another. We have r equals three plus two cosine theta. So the most popular polar curves that you're going to graph are circles, cardioids, we haven't done one of those yet, limassons, and then sometimes you do the roses with the petals, okay? So when you have r equals, let me write, a plus b cosine theta or r equals a plus b sine theta, Okay, this is when you have a limaçon, which is what we're gonna graph right now. And sometimes they have a little loop inside and sometimes they don't. So the way to tell whether or not they have a loop is you just look at which number's bigger, A or B. So if B is bigger than A, then there's a loop. If B is less than A, no loop. Okay. So here I can tell, oh, two, that's smaller than three. There's no loop on this guy. And they kind of look like a cardioid. It's just that the little dimple part is placed differently. Um, and then if you're looking at a cardioid, what happens is A and B are the same. So basically you have A plus A cosine theta or R equals A plus A sine theta. And these are cardioids. Okay. Now, also it's helpful since we know it involves cosine theta, this guy's going to be symmetric with respect to the x-axis. So go ahead, graph it however you were taught and however you need because the graph is essential so that we can get our limits of integration. I'm just going to put a few values. I have an idea what a limason looks like. So I'll just do zero pi over two pi, why am I skipping that guy? Pi, three pi over two. And then let's see if that's enough, okay? So if theta is zero, cosine of zero is one, so three plus two, that's gonna be five. Pi over two, cosine of pi over two is zero, so this will just be three. If theta is pi, cosine of pi is negative 1, so 3 minus 2 is 1. And then 3 pi over 2, cosine 0 there, so 3 plus 2 times 0 is just 3. I think we can get a good graph with just this. I really do. Okay. So it's going to be mostly on quadrants 1 and 4. And notice here, like when theta is zero, r is five. So I'm going to have to go all the way out to one, two, three, four, five. Pi over two, three. Pi one. And then three pi over two, also three. So theta is zero, r is five. Theta is pi over two, r is three. Theta is pi, r is one. Theta is three pi over two, r is three. And then it's just going to look something like this. It's got a little dimple. Oh, hold on. It's coming in too close. Okay, so this is not the most perfect, but I can use it to figure out the limits of integration and everything else that I need for my problem. So we want the area enclosed by this 
polar curve. Lovely, lovely. Now let's see here. Well, the area starts definitely when theta equals zero. It keeps going, pi over two, yep, there's area here. To pi keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. So all the way around, zero to two pi, all the way around. Yep, yep, yep. So area is gonna be one half integral, zero to two pi, r squared, radius squared, so that's three plus two cosine theta squared d theta. Now, because of symmetry, if you want, you could double it and just go zero to pi. I don't know if that would necessarily make the integral any easier. You would just get rid of the one half, but I already have zero as a lower limit, so I'm not gonna do it, okay? But if you want to, you live your best life, you do it. I'm just gonna expand inside the parentheses. Let's multiply this out. So it's gonna be nine plus, here you multiply these by each other and then double it. So three times two cosine theta, that's six cosine theta, double it, 12 cosine theta, and then the last term would be plus four cosine squared theta, d theta. How are we doing? Okay, and then, oh, there's four cosine squared theta again. Cosine squared theta you replace with one half times one plus cosine two theta, and then there was also that four out front, wasn't there? Yes, so let's see what we've got going on now. One half integral, zero to two pi, nine plus 12 cosine theta plus, I'm gonna distribute all this at the same time, two plus two cosine two theta d theta, all right? And I wouldn't integrate just yet. Always combine like terms as much as possible before you take any antiderivatives because Remember, we're gonna to have to evaluate everything at the li limits of integration, and the fewer terms you have, the better. So 11 plus 12 cosine theta plus two cosine two theta d theta. Now we're ready. Do you feel ready? Mm, okay. One half times antiderivative of 11. Yeah, just 11 theta. Antiderivative of 12 cosine theta is gonna be 12 sine theta. And then the two will get canceled out now, plus sine two theta. And we'll evaluate this from zero to two pi. All right, so now this is one half, 11 times two pi, that's 22 pi, plus 12 times sine of two pi, that's zero, plus sine of two times two pi, sine of four pi is also zero. Minus, if I put zero in for the lower limit, everyone's zero, right? So we've got one half times 22 pi, so final answer is just 11 pi. Boop. Good? How are we doing? Okay. Let's look at another kind of polar curve. I wanna give you like a good array of examples. Find the area enclosed by one loop of the polar curve. So looking at this equation, this is a rose with three petals. So when you have R equals A cosine B theta, or R equals A sine B theta. Those are roses, okay? With, if B is odd, you have B petals. Like if B is three, you have three petals. If B is even, you have double that number of petals. So if this had been a two, we would have had four petals, okay? Good. Do you want to see me draw a rose really quick with this trick that I learned when I was in middle school? Doesn't that look nice? It's a rose. Okay. I digress. Let's do some calculus. Okay. So um, what do these roses look like? And they only want one loop of the curve. So I just have to find the area within one petal. Well, what I like to tell my students is figure out how long it takes for one petal to get traced out. And one petal is when the radius starts at zero and goes back to zero. 
So what you do is you take your polar equation, four cosine three theta, and we're gonna set it equal to zero and just find all general solutions. So hopefully you remember doing this from trig in pre-calc. If not, let's just refresh your memory right now. So cosine three theta is zero. When is cosine zero? At pi over two, three pi over two, et cetera, et cetera, right? So that means three theta is pi over two plus pi times k, where k is an integer. Because there's infinitely many places, right? Where cosine zero. Okay, and then dividing by three, I get theta equals pi over six plus pi over three k. If you wanna abbreviate, k is an integer, you could write k is an element of the set of integers like that. Okay, so what does this tell me? Whew. Well, it tells me at pi over 6, the radius is 0, and it takes pi over 3 for me to trace out a whole nother petal. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So the period is pi over 3. Let's use that to make ourselves a little table. And then I'll, I'm going to put just the roughest of sketches, just enough so that we can draw one decent petal and then the other two can be wonky and no one will be mad about it. So R equals four cosine three theta. Let's put in our table. Um, how about zero pi over six? I'm going to do negative pi over six. If you want to do more, you can do pi over four, pi over two, but you'll see we don't need it. Okay, if theta is zero, four times cosine of zero is going to be four, right? Cosine of zero is one times four is four. Pi over six. Cosine of three times pi over six is going to be cosine of pi over two. So four times zero, zero. This is also zero. This is also zero, etc. So if you want to know where the other values are, where r is 4, look at the first one happened at 0, and we know the period is pi over 3, so it'll happen again at 0 plus pi over 3. So if you want to put pi over 3 on your table, and then cosine of 3 times pi over 3, that's cosine of pi, which is negative 1 times 4, so this would be negative 4. And then if you did another one at 2 pi over 3, right? I keep adding pi over 3 because that's the period. Then you'd have cosine of 2 pi, which is 1, and then 4 times 1, 4. So let's get this show on the road. Do, 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 do. I'm just going to say pi over 6 is about here. And then negative pi over 6 is here. So then that would be pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, okay? All right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, we have 4. Pi over 6, 0. So like here's one petal. If you want more petals, we can do them. Pi over 3, negative 4. So here's pi over 3, but negative 4 means i got to go through the other side, yes? So 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm just going to say somewhere around here we've got another one. Boop, boop. And then 2 pi over 3, positive 4. Again, this is my 2 pi over 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. Somewhere over here. Boom. Okay, but we didn't need all the petals. That one should be longer. <laughs> Pretend the four is there. We only need the area inside one petal. So say this one. Okay. Where does it live? What should the limits of integration be? It should go from negative pi over 6 to positive pi over 6, right? Good, good, good. Okay, so let's set it up. So the area is going to be 1 half integral from negative pi over 6 to pi over 6. And then r squared, that would be 4 cosine 3 theta squared d theta. Now, as soon as I look at this region, I go, oh, but it's symmetric with respect to the x-axis. So it's going to be a lot nicer if I integrate from 0 to pi over 6. Right? Wouldn't you rather have a zero down there instead of negative pi over six? 
and then I can just double it because this top portion is symmetric to the bottom portion. So you have one half, then we're gonna double it and we're just gonna go zero to pi over six. And then let me multiply this out. It's gonna be 16 cosine squared, three theta, d theta, good? This gets squared, don't touch the argument on the trig function. Now these guys cancel, boom, boom, I love it. And then, oh my goodness, there's another cosine squared. So what do we do when we integrate? Yes, we're gonna replace cosine squared three theta with one half times one plus cosine. Now you have to double three theta, which makes it six theta, d theta. Good, we got it? Okay. And then this is just gonna give me eight. So let me put that outside the integral and we're ready to take the antiderivative. No need to drag this out. Antiderivative of one is theta. Antiderivative of cosine six theta. Good, one sixth sine six theta from zero to pi over six. Love it, okay. And then this is gonna be eight times pi over six plus one sixth sine of pi is zero minus zero plus zero. So what is this? Eight pi over six, which simplifies to four pi over three. Voila. How was that one? Okay, good. I have a few more. This time we're gonna be working with more than one polar curve at a time, okay? So find the area inside the first curve and outside the second curve. And when you're doing polar areas between curves, the way you set up the integral is you have one half integral from A to B, R outer squared minus R inner squared, D theta. So outer would be the outer radius, the curve that's on the outside, and R inner is the inner radius, the curve that's on the inside. And you've done something similar to this with um, subtracting. Think about when you were doing areas between curves, you did top minus bottom or right minus left. So in polar, right, we don't think rectangularly. There's no up and down or right and left. There's outer and inner because we're working in the polar coordinate system. So this is the formula that you're gonna use for area between polar curves, all right? And we need the area inside four sine theta and outside r equals two. Okay, so right off the bat, I know this is a circle centered on the y-axis, radius is two. This is also a circle. It's centered at the origin, centered at the origin. So anytime you have r equals a constant, that's also a circle, but it's just centered at zero, zero. And whatever r is equal to, that's the radius. So we have two circles, and anytime you're finding area between two polar curves, you gotta find their intersection. So let's do that first. So intersection, I find that by setting the polar curves equal to each other. So four sine theta equals two. Divide by four, that means sine theta is a half. So when is sine theta positive one half at pi over six and, very good, five pi over six. So let's graph these two circles. Do you guys like this section? My students always have a hard time with it because I think polar graphing is uncomfortable. Okay, one of them is they both have radius two, right? So they should be the same size circle. They're just centered in different places. So I'll say this is r equals two. And then the other one should be sitting up here centered on the y-axis. Okay, so this is r equals, oh, I wanna match the color. r equals four sine theta. And this one is r equals two. And then, ooh, look how beautiful. This is where they intersect. Five pi over six. 
and over here, pi over six. And we want the area inside this circle, outside this circle. So what's the region? It's right here. That's the area that we want, okay? Good, good, good. Now, we have to figure out what the limits of integration should be. Hopefully that's clear. Pi over six, five pi over six, that's my A and B. And then we also need to know what the outer radius is and the inner radius. Sometimes it's super obvious, but in some cases it's easy to get kind of turned around. So I'm gonna show you something that I do, and it works also in Calc 3. So draw a ray starting from the origin always that goes through the region outward, outward, okay? So let me draw and let me make it kind of a thicker pen. Okay, here, here's my ray. Where it hits first is the inner radius and then where it hits second is the outer radius, okay? And that would work if you drew it over here or over here or any other direction. Where it hits first is the inner radius, where it hits second is the outer radius. So now we should be able to set up the integral okay, yeah? So the area is gonna be one half. Limits of integration go from pi over six to five pi over six. Outer radius is this curve, which is four sine theta, and that all gets squared, minus inner radius was this curve, this circle, which was just r equals two squared d theta, okay? Now let's see here, what can we do to make our life nicer? I am noticing this area is symmetric with respect to the y-axis, so instead of going pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6, I can integrate from pi over 6 to pi over 2 and double it. And honestly, I would rather have pi over 2 as my upper limit. It's usually easier to evaluate than 5 pi over 6, you know. So I, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to have 1 half times 2, and we're going to go pi over 6 to pi over 2. And then let's multiply this all out. So this is going to be 16 sine squared theta minus 4, right? d theta. And then these guys just cancel out front anyways. Okay, now from here, let's go ahead, see what we need to do to integrate. So we're going from pi over 6 to pi over 2. 16 times, instead of sine squared theta, I'm going to write 1 half... 1 minus cosine 2 theta, and then minus 4 d theta. So this is 8, and then that will distribute. And let's see what we've got here now. So pi over 6 to pi over 2, 8 minus 8 cosine 2 theta minus 4 d theta. Yeah? Very good. And then 8 minus 4, I can combine those. Look, I took up too much space drawing that graph. Let me get my act together. Okay, so pi over 6 to pi over 2. Then this is going to be 4 minus 8 cosine 2 theta, d theta. And then now we can anti-differentiate. So you should have 4 theta minus antiderivative of 8 cosine 2 theta would be 4 sine 2 theta. And then let's evaluate from pi over 6 to pi over 2. Okay, good, good. So we've got upper limit 4 times pi over 2, that's 2 pi, minus 4 times sine of pi is 0, minus, now the lower limit, 4 times pi over 6, that's 2 pi over 3, minus 4 times and then sine of 2 times pi over 6, that's sine of pi over 3, which is rad 3 over 2. Okay, so what do I got? 2 pi minus 2 pi over 3 plus 2 rad 3 
2 pi is 6 pi over 3 minus 2 pi over 3. This is 4 pi over 3 plus 2 rad 3. Okay. How was that one? Good? Okay. I think I have just two more. Again, remember, we're finding the area inside the first curve, outside the second curve, okay? Three cosine theta, that's a circle, centered on x-axis, very good. And the radius is not three, but three halves. R equals one plus cosine theta, that's a cardioid. And if you wanna plot a few points, we can make a quick table. I also know it's symmetric with respect to the x-axis because there's cosine theta in it, okay? So we'll graph them in just a hot second. First, let's find the intersection between these two curves. So let's set them equal to each other. Three cosine theta equals one plus cosine theta. Put all your cosine thetas on one side. So two cosine theta is one, that means cosine theta is a half. So that happens when theta is, good, pi over three and five pi over three. So now let's graph. I know most of the action is gonna be in quadrants one and four, but we still will have like some spillover into the other quadrants. Okay, oh, and then let me make a table for the cardioid. So theta, and then r is one plus cosine theta. So I think four should be enough. Let's just do theta, pi over two, pi, three pi over two. So cosine of zero is one, one plus one, this is two. Cosine of pi over two is zero, so this will be one. Cosine of pi is negative one, so r is zero. And then three pi over two, r will be one. Okay, and then we do need to go all the way out to three, right, for this circle in the x direction. Okay, so I'll say that's three, wherever that ended up. Right here, this is three. One, two, and then there's the center, right, at three halves, should you need it. So this is r equals, three cosine theta, and then the cardioid, let me draw that now. So zero, two, the radius is two, pi over two, one. Oh, let me label that. Pi over two, one, pi is zero, and then three pi over two, one. So here's our cardioid. Kind of wiggly at the bottom. I don't love it. Let me do a redo. As long as you get the general idea, you're good. Okay, I feel a little better about that one. And then also we found that they intersected at pi over three and at five pi over three, but we're gonna talk about that in just a minute. Okay, so we want the area inside three cosine theta and outside the cardioid. So basically what's bounded between the two of them, it's this region here, yes? Okay, good. Very nice. Now we need to talk about our limits of integration, okay? I know when we were solving, we called this five pi over three, which it is, it is five pi over three. But in terms of setting up an integral, you have to be careful. You can't go pi over three to five pi over three because none of the area is there. You see that issue? So instead, I'm gonna think of this, it's the same, it's coterminal with negative pi over three. Negative pi over three to pi over three does make sense in terms of capturing where the region lives, okay? To represent where the area of the region is. So our limits of integration, I'm gonna use negative pi over three to positive pi over three. And then we have to figure out what's the inner radius and what's the outer radius. So you draw that ray going outwards. 
This is the inner radius. That's the outer radius. Yeah? In, out. Okay, let's see if we can set this guy up. So area is going to be one half integral, negative pi over 3 to positive pi over 3, outer radius squared minus inner radius squared. Outer radius is determined by the circle 3 cosine theta squared minus inner radius is the cardioid whose equation was 1 plus cosine theta squared d theta. Very nice. Okay, now from here, same thing that we did in the last problem. Since this region is symmetric with respect to the x-axis, let's double it, get rid of the 1 half, and go from 0 to pi over 3. That'll just make things so lovely. So now 2 times 1 half, 0 to pi over 3. You know, you guys don't have to write this. I just do it so I don't lose any of you. I, when you're first learning something and someone skips a lot of basic steps, it just makes you think harder. So I don't like to do it too much. Okay, now let's multiply everything out. So this will be 9 cosine squared theta minus 1 plus 2 cosine theta plus cosine squared theta d theta. Good? Okay, now let's clean up. So this will be integral 0 to pi over 3, 9 minus 1, that's going to be 8 cosine squared theta, minus 1 minus 2 cosine theta, d theta. And then again, here's cosine squared theta, so I'll replace it with 1 half times 1 plus cosine 2 theta. And then I have 8 times all of that, so that's going to be a 4 that gets distributed. So 0 to pi over 3. 4 plus 4 cosine 2 theta minus 1 minus 2 cosine theta d theta. Nice. Okay, then let's go ahead, combine like terms, 4 minus 1. Oof. 4 minus 1, that's going to give me 3 plus 4 cosine 2 theta minus 2 cosine theta d theta and then this part I'm just going to go quickly we've done so many of these 3 theta plus 2 sine 2 theta minus 2 sine theta good from 0 to pi over 3 and then let's see upper limit 3 times pi over 3 that's pi plus 2 times sine of 2 pi over 3 is rad 3 over 2 Minus 2 times sine pi over 3 is again rad 3 over 2. Minus just a bunch of zeros for the lower limit. So these guys cancel. And we are just left with pi. Fab, fab. I think I told you I had one more, right? I was not lying. Find the area of the region that lies inside both curves. What are the curves? r equals 3 sine theta and r equals 3 cosine theta. So each of these is a circle, radius 3 halves. One is centered on the y-axis, one is centered on the x-axis. Let's find the intersection. So set 3 sine theta equal to 3 cosine theta, which is just sine theta equals cosine theta. From here, don't make it harder than it needs to be. Literally just think to yourself, wait, when are sine and cosine equal? Oh, at pi over 4, when they're both 1 over rad 2, and also in quadrant 3 at 5 pi over 4, when they're both negative 1 over rad 2. So at these two places, you literally just sit there and think. Okay. <laughs> so let's go ahead and graph these. And then see how we can figure out they want the area that's inside both of them, where they intersect kind of. If you're thinking of like a Venn diagram, the middle part that they have in common. Okay, so one is on the x-axis, one is on the y-axis, and they are the same radius, three halves. So 
So, copy, I want one more. Okay, first this guy, come over here. Scoot, scoot, oh, oh no. I didn't want to resize him. That's good, that's good enough. And then this one's circled. Oh, beautiful. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. So here's their intersection. Pi over four. Now, they want... Let me draw it better. Yeah. Okay. They want the area that's inside both of them. So... That's all of this in here. Okay. Now I want you to notice something. In order to find this region, I'm going to think of it in two parts. So one part is going to be below pi over 4. And then the other part is going to be above pi over 4. Okay. Good. Now this little yellow part. That is the area inside this circle from 0 to pi over 4. That yellow part is the area inside 3 sine theta from 0 to pi over 4. This pink part is the area inside 3 cosine theta from pi over 4 to pi over 2. So in order to find this total area, you could do two integrals because this yellow part belongs to this circle and the pink part belongs to this circle or again we could notice hey these are the same it's symmetric right this region about pi over four so I can just find one of them and double it I think the yellow one's easier to find because it starts at zero I love plugging in zero from one of my limits of integration and then going to pi over four so the area is going to be two times one half zero to pi over four and then just make sure yellow region belongs to this circle. Who is this circle? 3 sine theta squared d theta. So this region doesn't have like an inner radius, outer radius, right? It's just bounded between the two of them. And this yellow part belongs entirely to this circle, 3 sine theta. Okay. And then I'm doubling it, that way I get this area and I can finish the problem in one shot. Okay, so then we have zero to pi over four, nine sine squared theta d theta. And then again, oops, sine squared theta, we're gonna replace that with one half, one minus cosine two theta d theta. Take your nine halves outside and then we'll take our antiderivative now, so that's theta minus one half sine two theta from zero to pi over four. And then just keep that nine halves out there, you know what I mean? Pi over four minus one half times sine of two times pi over four, that's sine of pi over two, which is one, minus lower limits zero, zero again. Okay, so pi over 4 minus a half, and then I have 9 halves outside. So I'll just distribute 9 pi over 8 minus 9 fourths. I think that's as cute as it can get. If you want to get a common denominator, knock yourself out. I'm just going to leave it, attempting to box it, and that's it. So I hope you found this video helpful. I know it can be intimidating. If you need to review just your basic polar graphs, then like I said, I have videos linked in the description that'll help you out. Give the video a thumbs up, share it with your classmates. I think they would benefit from it as well. Whoever else you think might love it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok, Math with Professor B. Love you all so much. I'll be back sooner than later. Bye-bye.